I've been trying to figure out how to word this video. I'm gonna go with first time home buyer advice, buyer beware, tales of craziness in 2022. So in prior videos, I've talked about how this year is for many lenders and realtors, the Hunger Games. We're gonna see a lot of lenders and realtors leave the industry this year, and that will continue to next year. Now, what happens when people are at the point when they're about to leave the industry is they get very desperate. They also get very mean, very mean and prickly, like prickly prickly. So here's a fun story, guys. I had a realtor try to counter me out of a contract last week. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about what that means and how it happened. So here's the deal. I've got a client, lovely, wonderful, love them best friends forever, you know, they're fully underwritten, they are locked, it's a VA loan, okay? I am currently the number one female VA originator in the United States. I'm not saying that as a brag, I am saying that because it's important in this conversation. So, they're with one of the best, they're fully underwritten, and they're locked, right? That is a beautiful package when you're giving it to a seller. That is, you know, <clears throat> a, a gold stamp that says this deal is gonna close. So. They write their offer and the listing agent calls me and that's fine. I always send an email that's like, hey, if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to answer. Now, there is stuff that a lender can say to the listing agent and there's stuff they absolutely should not say to the listing agent. And what will happen sometimes, and this is incredibly inappropriate and it is against ethics, but a listing agent will call the lender to try to work information out of them to negotiate against you, the buyer, okay? Now let me be very, very clear. <clears throat> I work for the buyer. I do not work for any real estate agent. I work for the buyer. That is not 100% normal in my industry. Now, in my industry, a lot of ways that people get business, the bulk of the way that people get business is referrals from real estate agents. So, you know, Becky or Barbara, you know, sent this client and we get referrals as well. However, you know, all the real estate agents that I work with, they know I work for that buyer. You know, I will take great care of their buyer. I will put on my armor. I will go to work. I will fight for that buyer. And that's why they send business to me. But sometimes realtors send business to lenders so that they get more information than they need, also so that they can control the entire transaction. Okay? Yes. <clears throat> and often, Lenders are trying to get more realtor business, so they will do or answer any questions the real estate agents have. Yuck. Okay, so this agent calls me and, you know, the buyers have put in an offer. They have offered how much they're willing to pay for the house. They have, you know, said that they would like an appraisal. They have not offered to pay an appraisal gap. Okay, so she calls me and the first question is, well, <clears throat> You know, they put in an offer below listing and my sellers want more money, so will they go up 10K? Okay. Now you guys may not realize this, but this is a very inappropriate question for the lender. That is a conversation with the buyer's agent because it is the listing agent and the buyer's agent who are in charge of negotiations, okay? If the listing agent is coming to the, re to the mortgage lender and asking that question, it's because she's trying to get information to then negotiate against the buyer's agent and the client. Okay, so I said, hey, I can't advise on that, but what I can advise on is they are fully underwritten, their debt to income's great, they have strong credit scores, you know, they're already approved, this will be an easy transaction. What else can I answer for you? She didn't like that, okay? She wanted me to go, yeah, or no, or yeah, like she wanted that information that she could use to squeeze them, okay? So then we go on to her next question. Well, have you verified assets? Of course I have, I fully underwrote them. That's one that drives me nuts. If I say I fully underwrite, you can't fully underwrite someone without verifying income and assets, okay? So if anyone is watching this and doesn't know that, that's like a real estate agent, guys, we can't fully underwrite without verifying income and assets. But I don't say that. I say, yeah, of course, we verified income and assets. That's how we fully underwrote them. You know, once again, they're fully approved. <clears throat> well, how much money do they have in their account in total? 
Mm -mm. No, 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 no. If you guys have seen my other videos, you know that that information can be used against you. There's hell to the no that I'm going to be giving up that information. This is a VA loan as well. It's a 0% down loan. The borrower has said they, they can pay their closing costs. That's all they have to show. Now, in this case, does the borrower have a lot more money? Oh, yeah, they do. Oh, yeah, they do. But that's none of her business. It's not the terms of the offer. It's not her business. Why is she asking me this? Because she wants to see if they can pay an appraisal gap. Yep. So that's why I'm being asked this question is if that appraisal comes in low, she wants to know how much money they have so that if they say, hey, seller, you need to drop this price, right? She can come back and say, no, you have to pay it because she knows they have the money. And most people are going to be like, oh, I don't want to lose the house. Maybe I'll pay it. Maybe I won't if they have the money. Okay. So I say, oh, you know, I can't advise on that in the totality, but what I can tell you is they definitely have more than enough to pay their closing costs and to close this transaction, which once again, we fully underwrote and approved. Okay. So my job as a lender, when I hit those situations is to be as nice as possible to reinforce, you know, the information I can give, let them know that it's not going to be hard to close. And, you know, gently push back on the stuff that is completely inappropriate to ask. I don't say, you know, are you effing kidding me? Nice effing try. Like, don't try to use me to negotiate against my client, you dummy, right? I don't. I think it, but I do it very nicely and politely because my client wants the house. So of course I'm going to play nicely. And nine out of 10 times, the real estate agent will be like, darn it. You know, like they're trying, they're trying to, you know, work me over to help their seller. Um, and they'll move on. Not this agent, not this agent. And I haven't, I've actually never had this happen to me before. So when it happened, I was like, wow, wow. So just so you guys know, whenever I have conversations that are weird like this with listing agents, I immediately call the buyer's agent and I tell them exactly what happened. And the reason I do that is because if a listing agent is going to come to a lender and ask those types of questions, um, there's a good chance that they're going to lie and say that I said something that I didn't in order to try to bluff out the buyer's agent. Okay. There's a lot of games in real estate and you know, that's why I'm so transparent about everything is because with the buyer's agent, you know, if she said, Oh, well, Jen said, I want to be very clear. Hey, this conversation was really uncomfortable. It was not normal. Here's what I said. This is the information she was looking for because that also helps the buyer's agent when they negotiate against the list, the seller. Okay. The buyer's agent, they do two deals a year. So it's not like I'm working with someone really strong. Okay. So uh, when you're working with people that aren't really strong, they don't necessarily get how that affects their negotiation. Because if you're only negotiating two deals a year, it's like, look, if I taught two yoga classes a year, am I a yogi? N no, no. So that's our, one of our weak links. Anyways. So the client calls me the next day and they go check your text messages. And I go, they're like, they countered. And I'm like, okay, I'll call you back. <clears throat> and I looked at the counter and I just went, holy shit. I, I like, I couldn't even believe the nerve. So the counter was a couple basic things, but then one of the lines was buyer to work with seller's preferred lender. Okay. Or buyer's preferred buyer's agent preferred lender. So basically the listing agent was trying to get me removed from the transaction because I would not give her that information. And she was trying to get another lender put in my place that would let them control the transaction. Yeah. Yeah. Now, is that legal? Not really. So if the actual seller right? Like if the seller was like, Oh, I'm not comfortable. And the seller, they could always ask, but this isn't the seller. This is the listing agent playing bullying games, trying to teach me a lesson for standing up and for protecting my client. Clearly <laughs> she doesn't know how awesome my clients are. My client read that and was like, yeah, Jen, we're not going to do that. We're going to stay with you. And I'm like, yeah, I, I, you know, I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I, you know, but Jesus, like, wow. And I looked up the lender because I'm catty and I looked up the lender that they were saying that he should go to. Okay. Now let's just take a minute. <clears throat> 
let's take the real the realtor drama out. Let's think about the seller. Okay. Now for the seller, the best lender for this client is going to be the lender who has the best ability to close. So if you have a lender that has them fully underwritten is one of the top lenders in the country, number one female for this loan product in America. Okay. And they're locked. That's, that's a pretty strong lender to come up against. So what lender could they think is better? Jeez Louise, man. So the lender, the, the seller's preferred lender did a total of $12 million business in 2021. Guys, you could throw, you could like work two hours a day and do 12 million in 2021. Okay. The VA percentage of that was less than 4%. Less than 4%. Yeah. So does that benefit the seller? Okay. And for you guys who are like, well, wait, is 12 million a lot? It's not. 12 million a year for a lender is not a lot. Like, you know, last year was crazy. We did 240, okay? You know, there's guys who do 400 million. You know, there's some big producers. I would say like usually I gauge a big producer as someone who's 50 plus. 12 is like a part-time job, you know, in our world, especially in 2021, okay? So take the realtors out. If you're the seller, right? And you've got a client, you're going to end up with a client either way with the guy buying your house, right? Do you want him with a lender that barely does any production and doesn't really do VA? Or do you want him who's never met him, talked to him or seen his file or structured it? Or do you have a better chance of closing your house if he's with a lender that's fully underwritten, locked, and one of the best in the field for that loan type? Okay. It's obvious, like even if it wasn't me, it's obvious that this is better for the seller. So the listing agent isn't even representing the seller at this point. She's just being a petty bee, okay? Let's just be honest, it's a petty bee thing to do. So they counter that and I talked to the client about it. I'm like, wow, I haven't seen that. Um, it was really interesting to me because I was like, nice try. Nice try. And what's interesting about this real estate agent is they basically didn't do a lot of business until they went over to a large corporation that feeds them business last year. And I actually have a letter out to the CEO with the documents just so that he knows, you know, what type of real estate agent he has hired, because that is not what I would normally associate with that brand. And I know that if he saw that he'd be furious. I've been on a bunch of like, you know, uh, money new stuff where he's another person sourced. So yeah, anyways, <clears throat> so she's not working for the seller. She's trying to harm the buyer and she's doing stuff in the contract, which people don't do. You don't try to counter out a lender. The only time you try to counter out a lender is if they were incompetent. You can't say that in this case. Okay. So in the end, the client's like, yeah, I'm not doing that. They counter back. They have me as the lender um, and, and everything's fine. Like they go, okay, fine. But just to like tell you guys, like some of the crazy stuff we're seeing in the market right now, like that one threw me for two days. Cause I was like, like, what if it wasn't me? What if it was another lender that was trying to protect their buyer? The buyer didn't know them as well. Like you guys know me cause you watch so many of my videos, you know, I would never harm you that I'm always like definitely the consumer advocate, but it's like, what if that happened with another lender where the buyer didn't know all of that, you know, and then the buyer's going to this lender that's less qualified, that's not going to do as good of a job and that is going to sell, like basically give all their information to their opponent. It's crazy. It's crazy. So have you guys seen stuff like this in the market? If you're a real estate agent, if your lender chime in, what do you guys think about this? Do you think I'm going to get countered out of more contracts? I bet you I will. I, you know what guys, I have a feeling <laughs> with, with my, um, uh, how do I want to word this? There are some real estate in, agents in the industry that think that lenders should just kowtow and do whatever they say, even if it harms the buyer. And I am not that person. So will I get countered out of another contract? You know, in this case, the clients kept me in, but I'm curious. Let me know what you guys think. I just want to share that because I thought it was so horrific. And this is some of the stuff that I am seeing in 2022, where I love my clients. I love, you know, we have so many cool success stories where people have been watching videos for two years and they did the steps and they're buying houses and I love all that. 
but man, I don't like seeing the darker side of real estate. It is really grimy. So anyways, I hope you learned something from this video. And if not, I hope you were mildly entertained. Um, yeah, thanks for watching.